In this series, we'll be developing a front-end for a CRUD application with React. End goal is to build an app where users can store their RPG characters, edit and share them with other players. Check the description for a link to current commit on GitHub repo. Hi, I am Smog, a senior full-stack developer, and today we'll learn how to create and nest components and how to pass and consume component props. We start dev server with npm start. Open the text editor and list the files. Root of our app is an index.js file. At the top, we have few import statements and render function in the body. What's interesting or unusual to a non-React developer is usage of XML tags in the first argument for this function. This is how React extends the plain JavaScript files. The actual name for this format is JSX or JavaScript XML. This function tells React to create two nested components, React strict mode and app. React will call their appropriate render functions and then pipe that output into the root element in our document. As you might have guessed, React strict mode is an internal component of React, but app is actually part of our application. It's imported here at the top and resides here within the app.js file. Let's dig deeper into the JSX and rules we need to follow here. As you know, XML is built using elements and each element must have opening and closing tags if it contains any nested elements in it. If it doesn't, it should use a so-called self-closing tag, which is denoted with a forward slash just behind the closing chevron. In React, we can mix plain HTML tags and React components. However, before using a React component, we need to import it from an appropriate module, like here. Whenever we use XML, we must close everything within a single root tag. It doesn't matter if we are passing it as an argument to a function or returning it as value. To conform to this rule, you shouldn't introduce HTML elements like div or span, but instead use a fragment component, which is, well, an empty component defined in the React module. You can use it with its full name or with a shorthand, two empty tags. Note that the shorthand isn't available as self-closing tag. Let's quickly try and write a simple component so we can grasp the basic behavior. All we need is a new file and a function that returns an XML element. Let's return a simple hello world. To simplify things, I'm going to make it a default expert, like so. Now I can import this component in any file and React will allow me to use it exactly like a HTML tag. But on the render, this function will be called to provide the content for it. Let's put it in my app component to check. I'm going to import it first. And then I'm just going to return it instead. My browser automatically updates the preview. Great! In other references, you may encounter components that are built with classes and multiple methods called on different occasions, like component did mount, render, should update, and so on. That way of writing components is quite complicated and was the only way to go before React 16.8. Things luckily are a bit simpler now. Next important mechanism in JSX are embedded JavaScript expressions. As the name suggests, they allow you to compute a JavaScript value inside that XML element. All you have to do is just use curly braces. You can put them as children of other elements or even pass them as an attribute to your own XML element.
Now I want to show you how to return elements conditionally. I'm going to create a variable and with use of conditional operator, I will return one element or the other. I'm sure you already can see how powerful this is. You can pause here and practice for a bit before we tackle next subject. React props. XML elements can have attributes to specify some of their details. React utilizes this mechanism with components as well. Such an attribute on a component is called a prop. This allows rendering nested components differently based on prop values that are passed from parent components. There are two types of prop values. Value in double quotes is considered a constant string. Use curly braces to add a JavaScript expression, a complex inline computation, or simply a number, a boolean, or a function. Let's try this and add two instances of the same component, but with different prop values. Now we can edit the component and render it based on past props. In function-based components, props will be passed as a hash in their first argument. Let's capture it and the structure to local variables. If you don't know, the structuring is basically taking a hash and assigning it to local scoped variables. It looks like that. Now we can use this number inside our XML with JavaScript expression like so. If I save it and go over to my Chrome, I can see that both of my components are showing their past prop, exactly how we passed in our app. This allows for all sorts of things. You can add these props to the body of the component, pass it to another nested component, calculate some value internally, or even use it as a plain CSS value in a style attribute of a standard HTML element. Do note, however, that components that consume the props cannot change them. This value should be treated as a read-only from that perspective. Only the parent component that is passing a prop to a child can compute its value during their render routine. Also, remember that changing a prop on a component will re-render that component and all its nested components as well, which may be very costly if you have thousands and thousands of components on that page. All right. Today, we learned how to write JSX with XML and JavaScript expressions, how to create and nest components, and how to pass and consume component props. Wow, that's a lot for a single episode. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next video where we'll discover how to build navigation and routing in our app, and we'll install our first dependency. Cheers.